how to plan and photograph a total lunar eclipse step by step. Hello, Photopillar Rafael Navarra here. In this video, you'll learn how to plan and photograph the coming November 8th, 2022 total lunar eclipse or any other total lunar eclipse you wish to plan and photograph in the future. So get ready to learn how to use photopills to figure out where to go and when to photograph the eclipse, how to photograph all the phases of the eclipse, including the always amazing phase of totality, and also how to photograph the eclipse along with an interesting subject or landscape. Ready? Because as always everything begins with a plan. As you know, a total lunar eclipse won't be visible everywhere. It will be visible only on certain places on Earth. So the first thing you need to do is to use photopills to figure out where on Earth the eclipse will be visible and at what time each phase of the eclipse will occur. So very quickly go to photopills and tap on planner and here tap on the map settings button, the button next to the plus button on the map and tap on the eclipse map layer here and choose the eclipse you wish to plan. In this case, we are planning the November 8th uh, total lunar eclipse. This one here, go back to the map. And now notice that the date on, on the time bar has been set to November 8th, 2022. Now swipe the top panel to the left until you get to the eclipse panel. Uh, this one, as you see, is not visible here in Menorca where I have the red pin. So let's zoom out and see where the eclipse is visible. So in Europe, Africa, it won't be visible. In the United States, uh, uh, South America, Central America, it will be visible when the uh, moon is setting. We have the areas where the eclipse will be visible, all the faces of the eclipse will be visible, and the areas where the eclipse will be visible at moonrise. Those areas are great. Moonrise and moonset are great because you can align the eclipse with an interesting subject if the eclipse gets low enough. Okay, let's imagine that you want to find a cool shooting spot in New York. The US. So let's look for New York here. You know that the eclipse will be, will be visible at moonset. So where are you, New York? Here. Okay, let's place the red pin in Manhattan. For example, here. Do a long tap, long press on the map to place the red pin where you are. And as you see, and now that I have the red pin here in Manhattan, I can see the time each phase of the eclipse will occur on the top panel. Pretty cool. And on the map, I see where the eclipse will occur too, in that direction. This thin blue line you see on the map, which is moving while I'm uh, changing the time with the time bar. See that on the top panel is showing you the phase of the eclipse at all time. And on the map, you have this blue line moving now, showing you where the eclipse will occur. Pretty cool. And then you can use the AR button here to visualize where the eclipse will occur. In this case, you have it here, you have the horizon and you have the path of the moon and the moon is going to be there, right where the eclipse is going to happen. Cool. Now, based on the direction where the eclipse is happening here, let's find a cool shooting spot, maybe on the other side of the Hudson River. For example, imagine that you want to photograph the eclipse with the skyscrapers in Manhattan. For example, this spot here works pretty well because as you see now in this picture you see that you have the Brooklyn Bridge and also the main skyscrapers uh, of Manhattan. Pretty cool. And here on the map you can visualize the position of the moon at all time during the eclipse. It goes over Brooklyn Bridge and is setting over the main sky skyscrapers. Awesome. Cool, now I have my plan. I have my shooting spot, the red pin position. I know where the eclipse will occur at all time with this thin blue line on the map. And on the top panel, I have the time each phase of the eclipse will occur. So I know that the partial eclipse will begin at 4.10 a.m. The total lunar eclipse will begin at 5.17 a.m. And the eclipse will be maximum at 6 a.m. And then the moon will set and the clips won't be visible anymore. Fantastico, fantastico. This is a great spot to photograph all the faces of the clips, including totality, and also to uh, photograph the path of the clips above over Manhattan. Now that I have the plan, let's see all the gear we need to photograph the clips. Whether your goal is to photograph only the faces of the eclipse with no foreground, or to photograph the lunar eclipse aligned with an interesting subject, you'll need the same equipment you need to photograph the moon. You'll need a tripod and head, 
your camera of course and a telephoto lens 300 mil 400 mil 500 mil or more the longer the better here you have a crop sensor camera you'll benefit from the multiplying effect that the crop sensor has on the focal length also if you wish to create a composite image like this one then you'll need a second camera and a wide angle lens to photograph the path of the clips and the landscape Finally, use an external shutter release or an intervalometer. The less you touch the camera, the better. Why? Because touching the camera means introducing vibrations into the system and vibrations produce blurry images. On the clips date, arrive at the location one hour or so before the clips begins. Set up everything at the planned shooting spot, the wrapping position, and make sure that the system, the tripod on the camera is stable. Now, use the aumenter reviews of photo pills to make sure that you are at the right shooting spot, that the clip is happening right where you want it to happen. Now, set the focal length you wish to use to get the framing you want. For example, 500 mil. If your goal is to photograph only the faces of the clips with no foreground, then meter the light on the surface of the moon before the clip begins. Set an aperture of f8 to get a nice deep depth of field, but get ready to open the diaphragm to f5.6 or more to make sure that you keep the shutter speed under one second. Why under one second? Because you want to avoid the motion blur on the eclipse on the moon due to the rotation of Earth. Now set the ISO to 100, but again be ready to push the ISO up to 200, 400 or even 800 to keep the shutter speed under one second. Now set the shutter speed that gives you the right exposure on the moon. For example, during the partial eclipse phase, set the shutter speed of 1 divided 125 seconds. And my advice is that you bracket your exposure to make sure that you get at least one photo correctly exposed. Usually a one stop bracketing of three photos will work very well. As the eclipse progresses, you'll need to increase the exposure to get detail in the shadows. So during totality, you should use a much slower shutter speed, for example, half a second. But remember, don't go over one second if you can. Now make focus on the moon. And if you're photographing the clips aligned with an interesting subject, may focus on your subject. Then take a test shot and check that the moon or both the moon and your subject are in focus. By the way, there is an easy way to make sure that you're using the right camera settings to get both the moon and your subject in focus. Actually, I explain how to do it super fast in this video. Watch it. And last but not least, check that the spoil is right. Check that you're capturing detail in the highlights and in the shadows. And if something looks wrong, make the necessary adjustments in the exposure or in the focusing. Now, if you wish to learn more about how to plan and photograph a total lunar eclipse, I invite you to download our super detailed lunar eclipse photography guide. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video and in the first comment below. Check it out. And as always, if you like this video, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next Wednesday in another video. And remember, they have the power to imagine, plan, and shoot legendary photos of the coming total learner eclipse. Let's go!